over here to talk a little bit about heart attacks. Okay, so this is a model of the heart. Okay, the actual heart in a person is about the size of a fist. Um, in this model, we are interested in the red lines here. Okay, these are called the coronary arteries. Okay, they supply blood to the heart. There's three big arteries, okay? This one that runs along the front, this is called the left anterior descending. This one that runs behind the heart, this is called the left circumflex. And there's one that runs on the right side of the heart, this is called the right coronary artery, okay? Now, these are all uh, blood vessels. The inside is empty and allows blood to flow through, right? If you have risk factors uh, for what we call coronary disease, then you like uh, then you have an increased likelihood of damaging the inside of these blood vessels. Okay, the risk factors are high blood pressure, being a man, being older than forty, smoking, having diabetes, and having high LDL uh, cholesterol. The more risk factors you have, the more likely it is that you will run the risk of damaging the inside of the blood vessels. Uh, any part of the blood vessel that becomes damaged will try and heal itself and result in a buildup of cholesterol over the part that's damaged. Okay, so over time you get a bit of cholesterol somewhere inside these arteries. Okay, now these cholesterol plaques they are not stable. Okay, they are uh, an increased likelihood of bursting open. Now, if they burst open the inside of these cholesterol plaques will mix with the blood and it will cause the blood to clot, okay? If that happens suddenly, there will be sudden, uh, a clot will form suddenly and it will block the blood flow to one of these coronary arteries, okay? When that happens, that is what a heart attack is. So imagine this blood vessel is currently open, suddenly a clot forms here, okay? Immediately, it's gonna block the blood flow to this part, to the rest of the blood vessel here, okay? When that happens, this part of the heart, all this muscle here, will not get any blood, will not get any oxygen. It will start to die off, okay? When that damage is happening, the heart will react in a few ways. The first is it will get painful, okay? Now, the nerve supply of the heart is not very good. So when you get a heart attack, you don't actually just get chest pain in the area where the heart attack is happening, you get generalized chest pain, okay? So the commonest symptom for a heart attack is chest pain, which is described as a central pain, uh, a heaviness or a pressure. Sometimes it's described as a feeling of somebody squeezing, okay? Um, not everybody has that type of chest pain. Um, women in particular uh, can have quite different pain. They can have pain in the jaw, pain in the neck, pain in the back. Uh, and sometimes women don't have any chest pain, they just, they just describe the feeling of tiredness. Um, the other symptom that you can get is difficulty breathing because the heart is a pump and it's supposed to pump the blood around the body. If it's having trouble working because it's not able to squeeze properly, then the blood flow will stall and, uh, and, what, uh, and blood will build up inside the lungs, so that will make you breathless, okay? Um, additionally, you can have uh, unusually heavy sweating, or you can have dizziness because the blood pressure can drop. And in about 10% of people, the heart will actually stop just from the heart attack, okay? So 10% risk of dying suddenly from a heart attack. How do you treat a heart attack? Obviously, we want to open up the blockage. Okay, so uh, the blockage is caused by a clot of blood uh, and uh, the two ways that we can fix this is by dissolving the clot or by mechanically breaking apart the clot. Okay, if we dissolve the clot, we use a medication that has to be given through a vein. Okay, this treatment is called thrombolysis. If we want to give thrombolysis, you have to come to hospital very early. You have to be within the hospital from three hours from the time you start to get the chest pain, okay? Any longer than that, the clot will become too organized and the uh, thrombolysis medication may not work. 
the other drawback of the thrombolysis medication is that it will dissolve all clots inside your body. Okay, so if you're unlucky and maybe two weeks ago you hit your head and you have a small clot inside your brain, when you give this thrombolysis medication, it may actually dissolve the clot in your brain and cause you to bleed inside your brain. That is a risk. Likewise, if you had surgery recently uh, and you have a clot that's healing from the surgery, the thrombolysis medication can also dissolve that clot. So you will have a risk of bleeding if you had recent surgery as well. Okay, so uh, it's not the most ideal treatment, but it is an option. Okay, um, the success rate for thrombolysis is about sixty percent if you use it for heart attacks. Okay. The other alternative is to mechanically break apart the clot. Okay? To do that, you have to do a test on an angiogram. An angiogram is where we put a tube in through the wrist or through the leg, and we pass this tube all the way up into here, where the blood vessel arises, and we can put dye in through the blood vessel. When we do that, we can see where the blockage is, and then we can put a wire through that tube across the blockage and then we can put a balloon over the where the clot is and when we open up the balloon it will break apart the clot okay so the clot will just break apart into thousands of small smaller clots which will just be carried in the bloodstream okay if we do that it's called angioplasty okay when you compare the two when you compare angioplasty against thrombolysis angioplasty has a 98 percent success rate Thrombolysis only has a 60% success rate. Okay, so it's very important if you have the symptoms of a heart attack, chest pain, difficulty breathing, heavy sweating, dizziness, or fainting, that you have to go to hospital as soon as you can. Okay, because the sooner you come to hospital, the, uh, the sooner you can get assessed and treated if you have a heart attack. So it is a serious condition and it is important uh, to get the best treatment that you can for it. Okay. Uh, finally, the most important way to treat a heart attack is to detect and avoid, detect any coronary disease and get treatment for it before it develops and becomes a heart attack. So you need to find out if you have high blood pressure, you need to find out if you have high cholesterol, if you're smoking, you have to stop smoking, and if you have diabetes, you should treat diabetes, okay?